So next up, we have Ruben van Hoydonk, who has um, Ruben Hoydonk, uh, who will be uh, talking about marine biology, um, marine ecosystems, and uh, what we can do to improve them. Okay, coral reefs, can they survive climate change? Um, how did I become uh, a coral reef scientist and how did I become so interested in studying coral reefs that I even changed my careers at some point and moved across the ocean to this continent? Um, well, it's all related to what I did in 2001. I was traveling through Honduras and Guatemala with a really good friend of mine and we read in our tour guides that the Bay Islands in uh, Honduras are one of the world's cheapest places where you can learn how to scuba dive. So we decided, let's do this, we're up for an adventure. We uh, got our PADI certification there. Um, and this really changed my life. What I saw there in these reefs was so amazing. I didn't know this whole alien world existed on the water. The color surprised me. The, the, all the different forms of life really surprised me. It was mesmerizing. There were orange sea stars, there were purple sponges, and the very aptly named rainbow parrotfish. All really, really impressive. I went back to the Netherlands, to cold and dreary Netherlands, and almost immediately changed my field in biology. I was studying plants in a lab, and I wanted to study coral reefs. I wanted to know more about them. I, I got curious. And this had a really nice added benefit because within a few months, I wasn't in a rainy and cold Netherlands anymore. No, I was studying coral reefs in Curaçao where I had to scuba dive three or four times every day. Um, after finishing my um, master's in biology in the Netherlands, um, I got to realize that, well, coral, coral reefs are really threatened by climate change. That's what I need to study. That's what I need to work on. So I moved to Indiana, um, studied at Purdue with world leading climate modelers. And there I got the tools and the training to project what climate change will do to coral reefs. Now, why is climate change such a big problem for coral reefs? Well, this is. This is the root cause. This graph is called the Keeling Curve. It's named after uh, Keeling, uh, Charles Keeling, who started in the 50s to take very precise measurements of carbon dioxide in Mauna Loa in Hawaii. And the take home message of this graph is these greenhouse gases, in this case, carbon dioxide, they're ever increasing. We're burning so ma ma many fossil fuels that greenhouse gases in our atmosphere keep increasing. Even we knew a long time ago that this was going to be a problem for many things in the world. Temperatures are going to increase and, and all those type of things. So in, 19, in the early 90s, we already had an in international treaty in place that promises that we should all try very hard to make sure that our greenhouse gas emissions are below such a level that there will never be any dangerous climate change. Now, climate change affects corals in three ways. It makes the oceans more acidic, it promotes diseases on corals, and it increases the severity and frequency of coral bleaching events. Of all the carbon, um, of all the carbon dioxide that we've emitted by burning fossil fuels, about 30% of that carbon dioxide is already taken up by the ocean. This makes the ocean more acidic, and on average over the entire globe, the pH of the ocean has already decreased by 0.1. Um, corals build their skeletons out of calcium carbonate, aragonite, and when the oceans become more acidic, the corals have a harder time building these skeletons. That means that these corals are less resilient to damage from storms, and they're more vulnerable to storm damage. Coral diseases, this is an image where you see uh, a couple of diseases that are already prominent on coral reefs worldwide. Black band disease, white band disease, white plague, 
And all these disease zone corals, they have, they have a clear link to temperature. If temperatures get too warm, corals get stressed. And when they get stressed, just like you and I, they are more, they are more susceptible to diseases. If winter temperatures increase, the pathogen abundance increases. And if temperatures overall are just warmer, then the pathen, pathogen virulence increases. So if we put this type of information in combination with climate model output, we project that these coral diseases will become a major driver of coral reef health and mortality in the coming decades. But the biggest killer of all, uh, of all for these corals is gonna be coral bleaching. These images that you will now see, the couple uh, coming images are taken by my colleague, Derek Manzello, um, right here in the Florida Keys and Biscayne National Park. Inside the coral tissue, there's algae living there. And these algae, they photosynthesize. They use sunlight and carbon dioxide to produce sugars. And they gave these sugars to the coral host. And these sugars provide up to 90% of the corals metabol well, the energy that the corals need. In return, the corals, they capture zoic plankton from the ocean and give some of these nutrients to these algae. But when temperatures get too hot, roughly one degree above the expected summertime temperature, the photosynthetic apparatus in these algae breaks down and they start producing free radicals. These free radicals are dangerous, damaging to the corals. So the coral reacts by expelling these algae. That leaves, these, the, that leaves the transparent tissue over the white skeleton of the coral, and that's why these corals appear white, bleached. That's why they, we call it coral bleaching. And they, these coral bleaching events have already happened in the past and led to mass mortality. For example, 1998 was a big bleaching event, but again in 2005 and 2010, these events occurred. And these corals that you just saw here that were bleached, that was last year. Um, and so these bleaching events that cause massive mortality on these reefs should, uh, should serve as, as a warning. These corals are a canary in a coal mine because many, many of the impacts of climate change will not be gradual or will not be linear. There might be tipping points. What if one of those tipping points, something irreversible, uh, like the collapse of the Western Antarctic ice sheet. Sea level rise associated with the collapse of the Western Antarctic ice sheet is not something we want to see here in Florida. Um, if we model, we use climate models to project, pro project future temperatures and then pro project the stress that corals will experience, stress that we know will cause these severe bleaching events, we see that 90% of all coral reefs will experience these bleaching events annually by 2055. Only 5% will see it after 2060. What this means is that all coral reefs are in danger of climate change if we keep emitting greenhouse gases as we do. We need to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions if we want to save these coral reefs. But why should we care? Why should we care about coral reefs? Um, well, they're beautiful, but that's not enough. They're also economically very important. Here alone in the Florida Keys, uh, they generate more than $2 billion worth in revenue every year, every year through tourism and all associated activities. They're also responsible for 33,000 jobs here in Florida. Um, but the most important reason why we should care is a moral reason in my perspective. Because around the globe, there's hundreds of millions of people that depend on these reefs, not just for tourism dollars, but for their sustenance. They fish on these reefs and that's what they eat. These reefs are gone, they have nothing left to eat or less to eat. What needs to be done? As I said, we need to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. We need to decarbonize our uh, economies. 
we need to stop believing that we can have infinite economic growth based on finite resources that we extract from a finite planet. More specifically, what we need to do by 2050, we need to reduce our emissions, have reduced our emissions by 50%, and in 2080, our emissions should become negative. What that means is that we actually take out more carbon from the atmosphere than what we put in. We can do this, for example, with land, uh, land changes. Uh, we convert grassland back into forests. Um, but here's the scary part. The red line is the worst case emission scenario that we've come up with, that climate modelers use to project the future. The green line is the best case scenario that we have come up with. And this is the fourth generation of these emission scenarios that we have used to uh, project the future climate, future temperature. And every time scientists come up with these emission scenarios, we emit more than the worst case scenario. So what is a possible solution? Well, part of this solution, and a necessary part of this solution, is that we should start eating less meat. Why less meat? Well, <laughs> ah, not a response I uh, expected, but that's great. Um, Globally, meat production accounts for 15 to 24 percent of all greenhouse gas emissions. Take that in combination with the fact that the average American emits four times as ma ma many greenhouse gases as the, the, as the rest of the planet, as other people on average on this planet, that, that shows you that these dietary decisions have a huge consequence on climate change and on our greenhouse gas emissions. Now, it's very hard to make these type of lifestyle changes and it's not a very sexy thing to suggest. But I have one suggestion for you. How about a Meatless Monday where you invite six of your friends? That Monday, you have the same effect as if you were a vegetarian all week. But what can motivate us to make these real changes to get, well, momentum in the right direction? And that, to me, is actually seeing these reefs. These reefs are so beautiful and so complex. They can be a nice catalyst for change. So go visit a coral reef nearby. And we're very lucky here in this area. Panacam State Park is only 47 miles to the south. Beautiful snorkeling, beautiful scuba diving there. And so I ask every one of you here, go see these reefs before they're gone. And hopefully that will make you an ambassador for these reefs and will help fight against climate change. Thank you.